What's up guys? If you're watching this video, then you know that I, uh, I built stabilizers for my kayak. And so I'm going to go through everything I did and the materials and uh, estimated cost. But why am I building stabilizers? Well, I'll freaking tell you. I now have a troll motor. When I pushed it too much, it, it started to tip. You know, if you like it, you can look at the links and information and all that butthole stuff. And uh, yeah, you can make one yourself. Um, so yeah, let's get at it. Before we get started, I'm going to go over the stuff that I bought that in my brain hole I was coming up with a blueprint. First thing you need is a kayak, which is on the floor right behind me. No brainer, right? The next thing you need is a troll motor, right? If that's what you're using on your kayak for stabilization and you need outriggers. And I have a new port, 55 pound torque. I'm, I'm gonna use these as uh, the stabilizers on the end of my, uh, what I bought isn't gonna, isn't long enough to fit through the hole. So with like most projects that I do, I'm gonna have to make another trip to Home Depot. Next thing you'll need, is a battery. These are only one dollar at at uh, Walmart. You gotta be shitting me. These are only one dollar at Walmart. Battery and battery case. This is the one that I got. Um, it's got a cigarette lighter plug here. It's got a USB on the other side. Uh, it's got you know a test button so you can test your voltage, and it's got two different breakers or um, fuses. Uh, and obviously you need a battery charger as well. I got one of those. Now, um, I personally recommend whether you're using a troll motor or not, I recommend having an anchor. Uh, it has come in handy many times. If you're an angler. If you don't if you don't fish off your kayak, I don't think you really need one, right? Unless you're looking to eat lunch or something. But then you can just crash into a bush and hang out there in the water. That's what I usually do when I didn't have an anchor. Anyway, you don't need this. Honestly, it's... What you're talking like an eight pound anchor i think mine might be 10 um on a rope right you just tie it to the handle of the kayak or something and throw it overboard i'm gonna hook it up see if i like it uh, maybe be able to keep that anchor out of the um, cockpit of my vessel so we'll try this and i'll let you know maybe even show you in a video in the future of how well this doesn't work so, on to the materials for the actual outrigger. You'll need this. This is a three quarter inch, 10 foot PVC pipe. I bought three more three quarter inch PVC pipes and these are two footers. So it actually works out well. I bought three of them. So this is probably like a foot and a half long. My idea though is to come off the side of the kayaks, both sides using flagpole mounts. Um, so with these, I should be able to turn it and adjust its height as needed. You're gonna need some cutters. Uh, obviously I got my cement. I bought two T intersections, come out of the flagpole a couple feet. It's gonna hit the T. Then my two pieces should come out. I'm gonna have an elbow on both sides. This is gonna sit somewhere around here. And my elbow will come up a little bit. On the end of that, I'll have this reducer. So it's a three quarter inch reducer to a male end, I think it's a half inch threaded, and then a cap. For the troll motor, you need a mount. I ordered mine online, it's uh, aluminum. So this, is my uh, troll motor mount. The legs for that mount are too long. It, it's obviously just not built for this kind of kayak. So I'm gonna have to modify it. I think I'm just gonna have to cut the legs out altogether. Uh, this is the progress that I've made so far. Uh, so we've got like the brackets put together. Uh, this was my idea. So I've got a three quarter inch reducer onto a male half inch threaded rod, plastic thread thing, and then a half inch cap. So my idea was to put this on here, right? Run this rod, this little tip, 
through the hole on the boat bumper mount, the whole thing, and then just glue the cap with the washer on there. But the rubber's too thick, and obviously I can't cut it because it's inflatable. Also, it's it's like 2,000 degrees in my garage. Um, my sweat is sweating. Also, my idea for the battery. As you know, I have a sit-in kayak, so I have a hollow hole. I'm thinking about taking that stupid cubby that sits behind the um, captain's chair. I'm thinking about just cutting the bitch out and uh, making a hole and just dropping the battery in that hole. Oh, it smells good. All right, so I got two of them done now. Uh, I only need two. I got all of them done now. Um, I didn't glue the second one just because I want to pull it apart and verify my measurements for all three of you that are going to see this video and not use it as a tutorial. This is the uh, one of the legs to the motor mount bar. <coughs> the bar mounts to the top of this and this mounts the bracket on the back of the kayaks. So that motor's sitting like a foot or so in the air off of the kayak. I think I can cut the bar. I'd be cutting off like four inches. And it's cause I need that, I need that bar to be as close to the kayak as possible. Cause it's just, it's so heavy. Not the bar, the motor. Uh, yeah, so I think that's my plan. That's, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try that. So let's get to cutting and we'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, my idea worked. Here's the original length, right? Here's my new one. So even with the plastic pieces on it, it's shorter uh, than the bar. Um, I think this is gonna work. All right, so it's uh, day two of my project in the kayak. My idea was to run this little threaded rod PVC through the hole on the boat bumper, but it's too short by like probably an inch. Uh, this is what the contraption is gonna look like. So on that plastic piece, I will put this through. That's where the plastic's gonna stop. This will run through the bumper. Sorry, my, my eyes are sweating. This is what I got. I think it's gonna work. I haven't cranked anything down, obviously. I haven't put any thread lock on there. I just wanted to see how it was gonna look. So without it being cranked down, there's really not a lot of free space. So once I actually like crank it down, I think it's gonna work perfect. I think this is gonna be exactly what I needed to make this happen. All right, so I've just finished cutting the hole. Got my Home Depot hat. Support your local Home Depots. Um, I just finished cutting the hole for the battery case. This thing's like 400 pounds, so you should be pretty impressed. I'm just kidding, I took the battery out. I gotta charge it anyway, so I took it out so I can easily make sure that this is gonna fit in the hole. Um, in case you're wondering how I cut the plastic, it was actually quite easy. Yesterday, I was cutting the plastic notches for the uh, motor mount using a um, little Kind of like a drill bit. It's more like a grinder for like stone and metal or wood. But uh, today I decided to use just a metal cutting blade with my Dremel. Went a lot easier. Uh, so I sliced it up probably five minutes to cut this hole out. I made a template using cardboard. Um, and then, yeah, I can already tell it's not going to fit. My hole is not big enough. So close it's definitely close I think if I cut probably another another inch or so 
towards the back, uh, it should fit right in there. And so I wanted it on the far left side since the motor is going to be on the far right side to help compensate for the weight. And then I decided I'm going to mount the uh, swivels right here or right here because I actually might need to do it here because the pole might hit this when it comes down. So I might actually have to do it here. Something like that. Somewhere. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh man, this is such a good idea. It fits. It looks pretty cool, actually. It looks good. I love, I love the look. It looks like it belongs there. I'm just gonna rig this up. So for right now, I'm just gonna put this on the other side and just run a wood screw through it. And that should hold. I mean, there's not. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of weight on either one of these. The nice thing is, is this wouldn't be possible if I didn't have this hole here. So originally when I mounted this, I actually cut a small hole here. You might have seen it. Just so I could reach my hand in there and get the, the washers underneath these. Um, they're like threaded washers. So this definitely wouldn't be possible if I didn't have a hole here. So if you're gonna do this or something similar, you're gonna need access to the inside of your hole. And uh, it's just fortunate that this is where I'm keeping my battery. So I have access right here. Drove it through to make my template. I already mounted the other one. Wood is on the inside. Let me see if I can do this. You might have to like flip your computer monitor. So you know what, for at least the test, this is gonna work. Eventually I wanna run actual bolts through with uh, lock nuts on it and probably a piece of metal, honestly. I might go to my old work and cut out a piece, two pieces of metal. But for now, this will work. All right, so I kinda just started knocking this out and didn't really record a lot of this, uh, but I finished the outriggers. So, got this piece that mounts onto the swivel. I got a three foot bar, and then there's my boat bumper. I went ahead and just attached the outriggers real quick, just so you guys can see what it looks like. So, they definitely stick out pretty far. As you can see behind me, this is my wife's kayak. I put a new seat in there for her. It's got more back support and this shade. It was like, I think 65 bucks on Amazon. Uh, the kayak is ready to go as far as kayaking. Now I'm just making additions since I had the free time. It is the second maiden voyage of the troll motor and the kayak. Pulling my wife and son. And so far the outriggers are working pretty decent. Uh, I feel a lot more stable, not as stable as I'd like to be, but definitely more stable than I was before. But for now, this will work. And uh, we'll make some minor changes here and there, but the outriggers are working. I think I'll make some kind of shield um, the front to help deflect the water. So I don't have so much drag, but other than that, they work pretty decent. So there you go. It went pretty good. Concerning all of the modifications I did to it, I need to eliminate these legs. I had already taken off like four inches and I hoped that that was gonna be enough to make this more stable. This is obviously the full motor mount. I mean, it helped, but overall, there was still just too much uh, flexibility with the troll motor mounted, even in the water. So I'm gonna try to eliminate this leg all together and just have it mounted somehow on the kayak right here. The only way I can think of is to basically push these as far up as they can to where they'll stay flush. So you can see the hole right there is overlapped a little bit. Drill two holes and then run two bolts through. And that's the only way I can think of to make this work. So I don't have a vise. So this is what I got. 
So yeah, I'm gonna drill two holes through here and uh, run a bolt through and hopefully that, that holds it. Quick uh, disclaimer, um, I bought this battery charger from O'Reilly's. Uh, so I can charge two batteries at once and uh, obviously I've got it, I got it hooked up right now. It's been plugged in for maybe 30 minutes, if that. And I used this for like two hours yesterday, nonstop. Literally the troll motor nonstop, pulling my wife and my son in the other kayak and was messing with my fish finder at the same time. And it's already charged that battery. So if you guys are looking for a decent battery charger, I recommend that one. So, um, I think this is gonna work. I drilled in a recess area for the bolts for them to sit flat and flush. So I think this I think this will work. This should keep this from turning at all. They're decent sized bolts. They're honestly just scrap bolts that I had. I was trying to avoid going to the store, although I'm gonna have to. Because uh, I have to get an inline fuse for uh, my bilge pump. I've officially eliminated those big legs. Um, it still has some flexibility, but compared to what it was yesterday when we were out in the lake, I think this is going to work. So, yeah. I think that was the way to go. We'll uh, we'll see, and hopefully uh, this week I can take it back on the lake and we can test it out. Maybe actually do some fishing this time too. So here's my newest uh, alteration, my fish finder. I had it mounted right here. As you can see, it's, it's at a weird angle. Uh, from a certain spot in the seat there, the contrast just like it blacks out the screen. So I'm wanting to move it and I'm thinking right here right and um, for those of you who are wondering why I didn't do it before well the reason why I didn't do it before is because I have no freaking idea so I at the time I think I my idea was I was gonna put like a waterproof case here for like my phone and stuff I think if I put it right there oh and I also want to put a little wedge to make it because this is all the way down right here so I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna make a wedge a wooden wedge to stick in there and then drill the hole so I can see it straight on here's that little wedge I built sanded cut whatever you want to call it so I'll put that there and this will help the uh, fish finder be more angled towards me without it so you can kind of see this i don't know if this is all the way down or not yeah it is all right so that's the angle right now without it so i think you can see it's a it's quite a difference so with that on there it'll definitely be angled towards me a lot better so there you go thanks for the plan fam all right, so what I've done here is I drilled it from the bottom because I don't want my freaking leg. Where's that? Where's that? There it is. I don't want my freaking knees to get hit with sharp ends of the screw. Um, so I've drilled them upside down. I'm gonna cut these tips off with my Dremel and then this should be able to mount right on top of it and cover up the screws. I think it's going to do exactly what I aimed for it to do. Heck yeah, dude. So that is way better than what I had before when it was mounted here. So that's almost straight on with me in the, uh, the cockpit. Yeah. So now I've got this tiny little waterproof case. It's too uh, small for my phone. That's, that's you trying to get in there right now. That's, you're in there halfway. 
So it's it's too small to go in there. So this would be perfect for um, the wiring. I can't tell you how many times I've been out kayaking and I've gotten rained on on the way home or rained on while I'm out, which is also one of the reasons I'm putting the village pump in. I'm gonna cut a little hole in, or drill a little hole in this for the wiring and then find a place for it. And then that way, whenever I'm done, I can put all the wiring in here to protect it from the rain because this isn't gonna serve much else of a purpose. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Where's the pause button? It's not 100%. Obviously, a little water can get in there still. I'm not too worried about it. Um, this stuff is made to be waterproof anyway, or at least water resistant. But um, I went ahead and just used that old hole from the old mount. Uh, and I used a wing nut. To be honest, the only reason I used a wing nut was because that's all that I had that would fit this bolt. I'm using leftover bolts and stuff, so I'm trying to avoid going to the store. But it worked out perfect. You know, this will move a little bit, don't really care. And it's going to protect that wiring for the most part from uh, rain and stuff. So, yeah. So, I think I'm just going to use uh, a Gorilla adhesive and just stick this to the bottom. Hopefully, that holds. If not, I'll figure something else out. So anyway, this is going to obviously run to the battery with my inline fuse. So this is going to run to the bilge pump hose. It came in a large section, which I did not need, but um, it is what it is. It's what a three foot section, six, oh, it's a six foot, Jesus. This looks way shorter when it's, when it's like this. Six foot section was the smallest one they had that would fit this uh, this bilge pump. So anyway, it's gonna connect to that. Got my hose clamps. So I've got this piece here is where the other end of the hose is gonna connect. So the hose is gonna come from the bilge pump to this. Got this piece. And then this piece, I have to shave this down because when they cut it, it, now it's got like a little flange on there. But eh, that's gonna connect to that. Now right here is the money maker. Right here's where I'm gonna cut the hole in the side of the kayak and then screw this on. And this is what's gonna hold it in place, is this piece here. And I'll have this little ball valve sticking out Uh, yeah, three quarter inch ball valve. So, hopefully, this works as well as I hope it does. I think it's going to because everything with this project has been going pretty close to how I imagined it. The outriggers turned out beautiful. So, yeah, uh, that's my crazy connection for that. And then, obviously, I've got yeah, I got heat shrink, I got my inline fuse, um, my fuses, some extra wiring, and then a toggle switch.
it is Friday and uh, I'm about to go fishing. Test out all the new modifications I made. I just finished installing the switch for the bilge pump. So, got the battery connections. I have it running under the lip of the kayak all the way through here, the fuse. I gave access right here under the handle so the fuse is easy to get to and then installed my switch so easy as that and I put a PVC ball valve right there on the edge so I can open that up and allow the water to drain and then close it when I don't want there to be a hole in the side of my kayak so Perfect. I've been on the lake for probably two hours. Haven't caught anything. A couple bites. But I really want to just come out here, be on the lake, enjoy the peace, and also test out all the uh, modifications that I made. Uh, so let me switch the camera around so you can see. Um, I added the second uh, fishing pole mount off my wife's kayak since she doesn't really fish with me anymore. Uh, so obviously that you know that works great with both my fishing poles being able to go like that um, Fish finder perfect that wedge helped tilt it towards me. The contrast is great. It's working great um, I'm finding a lot of fish. They're just not wanting to wanting to bite um, And then the only issue I'm having with the troll motor is how much this is bending It's it's staying but it's bending the plastic it's mounted to. And I actually have, you can tell, like this is the tilt mount, so you can actually bring the motor up. I actually have this tilted to help make this straighter with it bending back. Uh, so overall, it's working great. I just would like to put a support under the mount to help this from bending. And then the last thing is, um, you know, I've been out here for two hours. I've driven pretty far, still have full battery. So, you know, this, is a, this has got a battery light on it. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, so overall, it's uh, working well.